Xavier Porter, BrooklynFights.com. We are live and direct at Gleason's Gym with the one and only Slick Mick Les Pierre, Mr. 19 0, 8 KOs, 1 draw, current WBC. Um, junior Lightweight. Junior Lightweight, okay. So we're here with Slick. He has an upcoming fight June 21st at the Melrose Ballroom in Astoria, Queens. So how's the training? How's the sparring been going? Sparring's been great. I just started on picking back up the sparring. This week I did like 32 rounds just to get my body back into fight mode. Um, and then as the weeks go down, we're going to do the, the sparring down. This week I probably do 24 rounds and then cut it down to 20 the, the following week. But it's all intense sparring. You know, I, uh, my kid Michael Michael Hughes, which is he's a, a Golden Glove champ, 2012 Golden Glove champion, I believe, and a 2014 New York Metro champion. And as, as an amateur, he gives me good work. Um, we, we've been going. We had a couple of good hard eight round sessions. I was able to get a, a hard eight rounds with him with Peter Dobson. He's another undefeated fighter. Um, you know, so as the weeks go along, we just want to pick up the work and, and just get my my rhythm going. Okay. Now, how is the training here at Gleason's? Um, Gleason's. I treat Gleason's as any other gym. You know, Gleason's is not like how it used to be, where you come in and you see world champions and you can learn. So I have to definitely either call for sparring or go out for sparring. But um, I just treat it as a regular gym. I come in, I, I get my work done. I don't really do too much chit-chatting and, and um, you know, chilling and being laid back. I just come in because normally I, I work at 9 to 5. So right after work, you know, I come, I come to the gym to get my work in. And then I leave because I gotta do it all over again the next day. So I treat gym, I'm Gleason's as a regular gym. You know, it's all business when I come here. It's really no play. And then um, when it's time to spar, I either go out for sparring or I call it in. Speak on that more. Like you just said, like, you know, you work full time and you also have to train full time. How was that? Um, it's extremely hard. You know, it's not easy. But um, I think it, it makes me a, a mentally, more mentally stronger and mentally tougher opponent or fighter. You know, because I have to dig down after a hard day work to get the to put the, the work in to be able to fight at a at a elite level or try to get to that elite level. You know, so it, it's definitely hard. If it, it would have been, it would be much easier if I didn't have to work. But um, that's just the cause that I'm dealt with, and no complaints. I just do what I got to do and grind out. Now you've been you've been fighting for for a while now. How, how yeah. long have you been fighting for? Um, I started. Comp as a fighter or just as in... In general. In general, I started um, competing in like 2006. You know, I started boxing late. I mean, I was introduced to it early, but I didn't I didn't start taking boxing seriously until out of high school, 2006, 2000, beginning of 2007. Well, early 2006, I started coming back to work on my craft. And um, I was able to obtain a, a good amount of amateur experience. Um, and from 2012, I turned pro. You know, I had some ups and downs, and since 2015, you know, it's been it's been pretty good for me. You know, it's still some trials and tribulations in between, but it, you know, as an independent fighter, that's what it you know that's what happens when you're not signed to anyone. So I just grinded it out and, and waited my turn. Patiently took the right fights, you know, and I did what I needed to do. Once the, the best opportunity for me came, I took it. You know, hence um, my last fight, Noel Murphy, was a great opportunity to headline in my in, you know in my city have my hometown crowd come out and support, which was a great great show out, great turnout. I believe I put on a, a you know, an exciting fight for people, you know, that probably never saw me fight before or heard, heard of me, but, you know, I, I was able to entertain the crowd and show people what I was capable of doing, box a little bit and, and you know, I apply a little pressure a little bit, you know, so it was, it was a good opportunity for me. So that's where I'm at now in my career. Okay. So now... You know, you got your fight, you got your upcoming fight coming. Once you know you get your opponent lined up, <laughs> you know what I mean. What, what do you what do you see going forward in your career? Um, once we get this this opponent opponent lined up, we can get past this um fight, and we can look on to bigger and better thing, better things. Um, another test, hopefully. Um, probably another undefeated guy or somebody that's gonna you know that's gonna be good work for me. That's gonna. Just give me step, put me a step closer to either a top 15 ranking, top 10 ranking, a minor belt, USBA. You know what I'm saying? Something that's gonna put me in the top 10 or top 15. That's gonna get me closer to a title shot. You know, everything that that's been happening for me in my career is has been you know from taking the right fights and 
good business moves, you know, on behalf of my team and my, my managers. So we just can plan on continuing to do the same thing because we're 19 and 0 now. We're a couple of fights away from more than likely a title opportunity or big opportunity. So we don't want to ruin that by taking a wrong fight. You know, it's just, and boxing is all about taking the right fight and, and making the best business moves to, for towards your career. So we just plan on applying that same strategic outcome and, and move from there on. How hard is it to get fights? Um, it's not. It's not hard. The question is, is how how hard is it to get the right fight? <laughs> you know, mm. I've been given plenty of great opportunities. You know, it just wasn't beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been beneficial to other fighters. And I'm not gonna put myself in a um, win lose situation or a lose lose situation. The way I look at it, I, I call a win lose a 50 50. I call a lose lose a no chance. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm I'm gonna I wanna at least go in a go in a fight with, without the upper hand at least 60 40 percent of winning the fight or getting the the, the the decision if it goes to that. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not really hard to get the opportunities. They've been they've been coming, you know, it's if they have the right opportunities for you, you know. Is there anybody particularly in your division that you're looking at to uh, try to get in the ring with? Um, not really. It's just that's going to happen eventually. You know, it's whether it makes for a good fight for me or for the other the individual. You know, so it's it's not about me calling out anybody or, or looking to fight anybody. It's just when the opportunity comes, if, is it the right opportunity for me to go ahead and showcase what I'm a, what I'm capable of doing? That's basically what it what it's about. For the people out there, describe who Slick Nick Les Pierre is. <laughs> um, slick, good defensive fighter, um, natural counter puncher. There's things that I can work on, you know, better. Because in boxing, you can always be a better fighter, and that's you know what we do on a daily basis. But I would say a slick counter puncher with good defense. You know, um, I'm not big a big puncher. But present itself, I can get you out of there. I could put my combinations together, depending on what I have in front of me. But I would say overall, slick, kind of punching, defensive fighter. Okay. Um, lastly, what are your thoughts on the current state of boxing within New York City? Or in boxing in the whole? I think, well, to, to answer your question on New York City, I think it's getting better. You know, as, as far as um, how it used to be a couple of years ago, a year or two ago, with the insurance, the health insurance situation, I think more fighters are getting an opportunity and more, more um, club shows are being able to be, be put on within the city limits. And I think boxing in the whole is, is even getting better in general. It's allowing fighters with blemished records, you know, to get opportunities that they probably wouldn't have gotten five, ten years from now, you know. So it really doesn't matter if you're undefeated or, or, or if you have a loss on your record. As long as you could put on an entertaining fight, and your style, you know, is a good style, stylistic matchup for the for the current fighter that you know, I guess you're, you're going to be fighting against, then the opportunity is going to be given to you. And then on top of that, with social media, they have a lot to, to say with um, these fights that, that go on now. If a fighter, if, if the, um, the, the, the social media feels that the fighter won the fight and got robbed, you know, that opinion is, is voiced as well puts the fighter in a, in a better position to, you know, get more opportunities and, you know, it's just better for fighters in general. You know, it doesn't matter if you're undefeated or if you have a blemish record. Okay. Lastly, for continued support, where can they follow you? Um, team Mick, T-E-A-M-M-I-K-K -K underscore. That's my Instagram. Um, you can follow me on Team Mick Instagram. You could um, look me up on, online at my website, Um my Twitter is Mick underscore Jagger, M-I-K-K -K underscore J-A-G-G-E-R. Um, and my Facebook is Mikkel, Facebook.com slash Slick Mick, S-L-I-K-K-M-I-K-K. -K -K. Um, those are all the little platforms that you can reach me on and check me out. Where you get the Jagger from? <laughs> that was something that was given to me back in the day. You know, I, was, I was a little, um, a little um, had a little swag to me. Yeah. Know? <laughs> my, my friends, they'd be like, oh, Mick Jagger. So I just ran with it. All right, there you have it. Slick Mick, back in the ring June 21st. Live and direct at the Melrose Ballroom in the Story of Queens. Make sure you come out. Tickets on sale. Contact Team Slick. Team Mick, T-E-A-M-M-I-K-K -K underscore. That's the Instagram. Okay. 
for tickets. So see y'all soon. BrooklynFights.com. All right, Slick, tell us what's been going on, man. Um, well, you know, my last fight, this is my last fight um, against the one Murphy. I just been, it was a good win for me in my career. I just been in the gym, um, training, still training hard, working on things that I can get better, better at. Um, went out, of, went after the fight, I, you know, went away a little bit um, to, you know, work on my craft, on the things I could get better at. Um, I, I spent a couple of days in D.C. with um, Gary Russell in his camp. Oh, word. Yeah, um, okay. that was kind of, you know, something on the road. It's something that me and my team put together. Um, was able to get a couple of jewels from the champ. That was, and at that time, he was just getting prepared for Jojo Diaz. But it was um, it was a good experience for me. Um, I plan on going out there again. Um, just to, you know, get that, that different look, you know, and, and the wisdom that they, you know, they carry over there. It's a, a um, good team over there. Um, hospitality was great. You know, Gary, his brother Antoine, um, Antonio and his pops, they all showed me love, you know, because, you know, they see that I came out there and I, I wanted to learn and I was working, you know, so I was definitely open to um, constructive criticism, whether it was harsh or, or light, you know, but it was a good experience for me, came back, took whatever I, I obtained out there and just worked on it, you know, from there on out to my next fight, which would be the Jewish Day.